welcome to this Crisis Group podcast. I'm Kimberly Abbott. Guatemala has become a principal hub for illegal narcotics headed from South American producers to U.S. consumers. And Guatemalans face crippling violence as drug cartels battle law enforcement and each other. Guatemala is newly democratic after decades of civil war and state-sponsored violence, and its economy is growing steadily. Yet violence and corruption, byproducts of trafficking, threaten to pervade Guatemalan politics and society. Guatemalan's leadership is only beginning to organize an effective response. To talk about this, I'm here with Mark Schneider, Crisis Group's Senior Vice President and Special Advisor on Latin America. What social, environmental, and political factors make Guatemala such a hub for international drug trade? I think first you have to mention geography, uh, that Guatemala is positioned right on the main road from the Andean countries where cocaine is produced and the United States where cocaine, unfortunately, is consumed. And so what's happened over the past several years is that drug traffickers have begun to ship to, through Central America through, through Guatemala to Mexico and then to the U.S. And as a result, Guatemala particularly has felt the full brunt of that increased traffic. And second, you have to remember that this is now 15 years after the signing of the peace agreement. And one of the commitments was to include the indigenous population in, in the mainstream economic and political growth in the country. And that really just has not happened. And as a result, you still have a broad portion of the population that feels itself outside the mainstream of society. And as a result, you have an enormous poverty among that community, and young people both in the rural areas and in the urban areas just simply have no options. And as a result, many of them are available to drug traffickers, organized crime, gangs. Extranjeros narcotraficantes reclutan guatemaltecos, les ofrecen dinero y son autofinanciados. And that's a major problem. Guatemala really has to do more in terms of finding the resources, increasing taxes to pay for the services to pr deal with the social problems and to deal with strengthening of its law enforcement institutions. What's the connection between Guatemala's political system, its fledgling democracy, and its role in international drug trade? That means that its institutions are not yet fully developed, and particularly its police, justice, prosecutors, judges. And as a result, the drug cartels, with the enormous amount of money that they have to operate and the strength of arms that they have to use, have been able to push the Guatemalan government around and to establish themselves in the areas where they need in order to move cocaine uh, through the country. So they're essentially acting as bullies. They're essentially acting as bullies or buying whoever they need. And in that process, uh, obviously, they weaken Guatemala's governmental institutions. And then they also uh, use that money to influence campaigns, to buy candidates, and to uh, generally try and ensure that local governments where they're operating either ignore them or collaborate with them. That's why over the course of the last several years, when the CC, which is the uh, International Commission uh, Against Impunity in Guatemala, was brought in to operate, one of the things that it was able to do was to remove nearly 1,700 police, police who had been found to cooperate with or collaborate with uh, these drug traffickers. And what about the political elites? How many of them are connected to this drug trade? You, you really, you can't say this particular individual or another individual, but several of those uh, political figures uh, have been prosecuted. Um, others in the various parties have been forced uh, not to run for office. And in some instances, uh, it's clear that uh, they, at the local level particularly, they collaborate uh, fully with the uh, organized crime. You mentioned the weaknesses of the Guatemalan institutions. How are they equipped to deal with this international drug trade? And has anything that they've done been effective to date? Well, there's several things that have begun to mark a change. As I mentioned, the International Commission Against Impunity has began to show that you can prosecute effectively officials who engage in uh, corruption and with drug traffickers or organized crime. And they've done that. They've removed ministers, vice ministers, and they've been prosecuted. Uh, it, Guatemala has also recently named a very uh, effective and aggressive 
um, attorney general who has already begun to reinstitute reforms that her predecessor had stalled. Uh, similarly, uh, there's been some indication that some of the reforms that have been proposed, at the very least, both presidential candidates felt that they had to say that they would continue those reforms. And finally, the one other reform that we should mention is that a very active and, uh, and brave uh, attorney was uh, named by the outgoing government to head a national commission on police reform. And uh, she is willing to continue in that role. And she's already begun to establish a roadmap forward with respect to police reform. As the ultimate market for the drugs that pass through Guatemala, what can the United States do to address the social and political effects of trafficking? Well, first, the United States really should focus on reducing demand here. To the degree that the U.S. reduces demand, that's probably the single most important factor in helping Guatemala and the other Central American countries and the Andean countries. Reduce demand, reduce the market, and make it less profitable for the drug traffickers. And second, the United States could do a lot better job on cutting off the flow of weapons from the United States to uh, whoever wants to buy them in these countries. And, and third, the United States could do more, although it's already begun, but it could do more in strengthening the legal and law enforcement institutions in Guatemala and the other countries. And that's what has been attempted recently, but the full impact of those uh, those efforts uh, has yet to have a demonstrated effect on reducing drug trafficking. Thanks, Mark. Thank you for joining us for this Crisis Group podcast. I'm Kimberly Abbott.